All right. So this class is the DocuSign class, or essentially how to get paid. Um, it's the newer version since we no longer have that. Um, so what we will do is we will go to my, so you're going to need to be at mykw.kw.com. And you will log in if you're not already. From here, how many of you are going to continue using dot loop, or is everybody switching to DocuSign? Show of hands. Everyone switching to DocuSign. Okay, awesome. So you can extend your dot loop if you want to pay like fifteen dollars a month for it. However, DocuSign you're not having to pay anything for if you use it through the company. So a lot of people are just like not wanting to continue the dot loop because it's an extra fee that you don't have to occur. Um, monthly. Okay, so uh, to get started, so how many people have contacts and their commands? Okay, if you don't have your contacts and commands, you're going to need to get your contacts in there. Whether the contacts that you are previously worked with or the new ones, because you cannot get paid or start your opportunity until the contact is in command. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to technology and command. And we'll log in if you have not. probably have things going on if you've been in it um, and as you start doing more stuff in a command it, it won't look as not busy as this um, so the first thing right here is your dashboard the second little icon right here is your contacts does everybody see that on the left hand side this is where you want to import your contacts if you need help importing your contacts into command there's two things one Keller Williams is having me pay me to help agents upload their contacts into command I will give you my email address and you can feel free to email me if you need help or if you're tech savvy and you feel like you can do it when you click on this import button that's over here on the right hand side you can actually download this pre-made CSV file and then copy and paste if you already have stuff in Excel or a CSV file you can actually copy and paste in the appropriate columns save it and upload it and your contacts will be uploaded into command if you're a brand new agent and you're starting and you don't have a lot of contacts that's fine you can simply go over here to add contact and enter the information. The person, the contact has to be entered before you can start the transaction, okay? So if you wanna follow along, you wanna do a test one, maybe on yourself on like a junk email that you don't care about, I would recommend doing that if that's the best way that you are. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter myself as a test one so that we actually can see it. Okay, so I'm going to enter myself as a contact. 
contact and I'm going to push create. Once you push create, and I'm actually going to find that contact that I just created. And So once you enter that person as a contact and you go back and find that person in your contacts, you're actually gonna go over here to, once you're on the main their details, you're gonna come up here to the up, this right here where it says opportunities. Does everybody see that? Yes. Where it says time, right, opportunity, smart plan, et cetera. So you're gonna click on opportunities. And you're gonna click create opportunity. Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna click create opportunity. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna make you fill in some information in order to be able to proceed. So it's always gonna be Austin NW because that's the market setting you're out of. The opportunity is either gonna be listing, buyer, landlord, or tenant. So for those that do a lot of leases or a lot of lit list, lease listings, we have those options for you as well. <clears throat> so for this example, I'm gonna do tenants, okay? Then it's automatically gonna name the opportunity name as your client's last name and whatever um, whatever opportunity type you, ch you chose, but you can change that if you don't want that as the opportunity name. Once you've done the, and anything that has the red little star has to be filled out in order to be able to finish creating the opportunity, okay? So once you've created once you've filled out everything that you need to, you will. Okay, we'll just do listing because apparently doesn't like that. You'll come down here and you'll do create opportunity, okay? Once you click on create opportunity, you see right here where it said it created your opportunity? Does everybody see that? Where it says Christina Santos listing? You'll then click, click on that link. It'll now take you into the opportunity that we created in commands. So from here, this is the details page. Anything on this details page is editable. If you so choose to edit anything, you just simply click this little pencil and edit everything. But make sure you save it after you edit it. Okay, so just for example, let me show you. So if I click on the general information, fill out every, anything I need to change, this blue button right here would actually be able to be clickable. You would click save, it'll save anything that you change. Okay, questions so far? Awesome. They both need to have separate contacts in your command, but I'm going to show you how you can add the how that'll incorporate later on in, in the example. That's a good question. Okay, so from here we're going to click on documents. Does everybody see this little tab? Can I ask you a question? Yes. Like on the property, like filling in the property. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. here. It's a new one because there's been a lot of new construction, and the, that property address does not show up. To it won't let you save it because it won't show up in the system. There should be a way to create an address. Like when I was in there playing with it, like an address did pop up, you can actually create the address itself. Okay. Well, let's make sure, well, let's try that later to make sure that we can get that to work for you. But I know that you can actually create the address because that does come up a lot with new builds. Okay. All right. So from here, we're going to click on documents, okay? <coughs> so from here, you're going to see what, it might be a little confusing, but it's not as scary as it looks, I promise, okay? So, there's three cell folders within this opportunity, this uh, transaction, right? So there's listed and contracted closed. So anything that you need when you're listed, that's where all those documents go, okay? Once you get all the documents from the listing and you're done, you're ready, you know, you're ready for the do listing documents to be approved, you're gonna click the submit to MC button, okay? And we're gonna go through this, but I'm just trying to get those to you guys an example now. Anytime it's under contract, and you've got all the contract, it's executed, everything's good. You'll, you'll click under the under contract, upload everything. Once everything's in there, you click to submit to MC, okay? Whereas in dot loop, you have to submit the whole loop over and over again. Then you just simply submit that one little subfolder, okay? <clears throat> so. So it's, it's a room. Uh, just automatically assigned to each transaction. <coughs> 
talk a little bit about DocuSign rooms. Oh, we're going to go into that here in a minute. Okay. Yeah. So we're creating the opportunity to go into DocuSign. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So once you've listed it, you submit listed once folder? you have everything done for the listing and you're like you're ready for compliance to look at all your listing stuff click to submit to MC okay. David or Alice will look at it and approve it or reject it and tell you why it's rejected if it's rejected yes and you're ready for them to review everything okay. you can submit it yes ma'am as the team associates are doing all their stuff in here, do you want them hitting the submit or do you want the rainmaker taking it? Whoever, however y'all have it structured. Yes, ma'am. So you have to enter each file separately. You can't just scan a whole file and upload it? No. 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 It should show, once you create that opportunity, you click on the documents tab, does it not show? Uh, you have to go to the details and click on the register. So on the top one, it's details, documents, offers. Going across. Like on the top. Know what you need to do. Okay, so on the documents, you can't miss Guys, let's keep the talking to a minimum because we are we are recording this, okay? Yes, ma'am. So you can't create the last step? I'm gonna show you guys that yeah, we're just create, simply creating the opportunity to okay. take you into DocuSign to where you can actually fill out the templates. Okay. Yes, sir. So in response to the question about uploading a whole file, I always thought we have that one with separately because eventually on the consumer side of the app, consumers will have access to their documents. And that's why they can be individual. Okay. Because there's certain things that they can't see and there's certain things yeah. that they can't. So if they need the closing documents two years down the road, they'll be able to just go in there and have to find them. They can't they don't need to see the other person's for example, if you're on the buy side, they don't need to see the seller's information unless they want that information to be known, okay? <clears throat> so from here, we're gonna go to start a transaction. Now you see how she has DocuSign and dot loop still as an option. Now let me state this so that everybody knows this, okay? You can still access all your files in dot loop for seven years to view them and to download them, but you cannot start any new loops unless you pay for that subscription on your own. Does everybody understand? Yes. Okay. So if you are not if you are not using dot loop on your own, you're always going to set it up in DocuSign. I'm assuming everybody has their DocuSign accounts linked to command. Yeah. No. If you do not, please stay after class so I can do so. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, what? If you do not have DocuSign linked to your command, if your DocuSign is showing, that means your link your account is linked. If it is not, then I need you to stay after class so that I can link your accounts. Okay? Does this DocuSign show right here? Yeah. Oh. I'm on start a transaction. Yes. Yes. Do I still need that? Not unless you want it. Unless you want to keep paying for it. What if we have two? Yours is different. We'll have, yours is a different situation. Yeah, you're different. <laughs> well, would you say it's intuitive that, that you've got to click down to get DocuSign? It seemed like they would have a radio button or something that would let me know where to go to my documents. Cause that's the, the well, we're still giving you the dot loop option so that way if you need to access your dot loop, any of your previous transactions, you can do so. I know. It's just, I don't know. It's a dot loop thing. It's not giving me up. Okay. Yes, ma'am. But if you ever have a DocuSign issue, DocuSign our, with our account won't be able to help you. 
Yes, ma'am. I just clicked on DocuSign and it says it appears you didn't connect agent access to DocuSign. Okay, so I'll stay your class now. There's probably one little step that you didn't realize that you needed to do. That's a super easy fix. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on DocuSign and now what it's going to do is going to actually take me to DocuSign. DocuSign transaction room, and this is where we're actually going to import all the forms um, to be able to get them ready to send to our client for signature and or review, okay? So from here, to go over a couple things with you guys, on the details page, again, anything on this details page is editable. I will tell you that if you go in and put in the address, your client's names, any of the, the name, the, their phone numbers, the email addresses, whatever you put on the details page, that information will auto-populate onto the forms that you import that we're gonna do here in a minute, okay? Don't pull in the forms and then add the details page because it's not gonna do it. So do the details page and then add the forms. Yes, ma'am? Details on the opportunity, right? Well, the details on the opportunity is different. It doesn't convert over not yet does not come over to the details page on DocuSign transaction room, so you would need to make sure the information is here, okay? So we have to put it in twice? For now, okay. yes. Okay, yes. I have two other, I have C transaction and A transaction. Go, start a transaction? No, go Have you already started this transaction? It'll say go to Make sure that you fill the details page first if you want that information to auto-populate onto the documents. The second thing that I recommend that you do, and you don't have to do this right away, but I would definitely do it before you send the client the documents for signature, is everybody see this people tab right here? So if you click on that people tab, that shows you currently who has access to be able to see your files. Of course, admin and accounting are always going to be available to access your files, right? Because we're going to have to be able to approve stuff. Now, <clears throat> to the people tab, yes. So, uh, if um, the admin can access to the documents... Uh, that's like KW admin, not... That's like, Frank, if there's an issue with your room and we need to get into it. to each other and command is what a county goes into approve. Mm -hmm. So that's why. So the admin can access to those documents here and they can talk to us too? No. 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 Okay. So after you added the details that people on your de the information on your details page, the next thing that I would recommend you is going ahead and inviting your clients or client to DocuSign. Now most of them will have a room probably a, or some sort of DocuSign account because if they've done an easy condition in the past, if they haven't, I would go ahead and add them. Um, it's, it's free, they don't have to pay for it, so make sure they understand that. So to invite anybody that <clears throat> is gonna be signing, 
you click on this invite button. Does everybody see this little invite with a plus? You'll click on invite and you'll type in their information. So I'm gonna do okay, I'm gonna do so one of my junk. This if you want to invite a team member that can access your files. No, that's sites. different. Okay. That's different. So I'm just gonna add a test email here. So on the side, you're gonna put whether they're on the list side or the buy side. I'm gonna put that they're on the list side, that they're my client, and I'm gonna invite them. So then what they're gonna get in their email is an email that says, so-and-so has invited you to DocuSign. If they have an account, they're just gonna sign in. If they don't have an account, it's gonna say, activate and um, create. And so I'm gonna go ahead and activate this account just so that we have it for further into the transaction. So if they've ever been a DocuSign client, it'll come up. If not, it's gonna send them a message, correct? No, it'll still send them an invite if they've had one in the past saying that you are asking them to join DocuSign so that you can send them documents. If they've never had one before, then they'll have to, all they do is simply create a password with that email address that you send it to, and then that account is activated. So Which is what I'm doing right now. Is that going to be a best practice that you want your clients to all access these files now? Yes. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and activate my account. And so now my account is activated. So you can text, call, or email your client. Say, hey, I just sent you an invite through DocuSign. If it's not in your inbox, please check your spam because sometimes emails will mark it as spam. Um, and I would do that once you've started the room so that way they have time to accept the invite because they cannot sign the documents until they accepted the invite or created their account. Okay? So once we've done the details page, we've invited our people to the document to the to the room. We're now gonna click on the documents tab. And we're now gonna go here to add. So there's a couple different options. You can go to ZipForms, we'll take you to the ZipForms website and you can pull in the forms. Or, or this is what I recommend, you go to DocuSign Forms and there's DocuSign Form Library, which will take you straight to the ABOR or the TARS website. Or there's the DocuSign Form Groups, which will take you to all of the templates that used to be in DotLoop are now in DocuSign. So all the ones that Alice would put in there for you guys, are in here. So all the standard ones, like the commercial, the one to four, the lease, all that stuff is here. But if you need something that's not listed on this main drop down, if you go to all TNSR docs, it'll pull up all the different documents and then you can actually search for the form here rather than having to go through and scroll for the form. Okay? It makes it a little easier for you guys. You can use zip forms if that's what you want. There's, yes, you can use the, yes, you can use zip forms. There's nothing wrong with that. We were just trying to make it easier for some people that are used to the templates of dot and dot loop to try to make the change a little easier. Yes, ma'am. Is it normal to get a uh, security question uh, for recent passwords and maybe don't send me? Depends on how they have their settings set up, but sometimes, yeah. Okay. I just had a small challenge. They're asking me to enter a phone number I remember from my childhood. <laughs> 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 I remember from my childhood. So, should I just see you until it? Yeah, yeah, we'll have to look at that. Okay. I don't know what you did, Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember your phone number from my childhood? I don't know. <laughs> Just so that I can show you guys something later on in the. Uh, I'm sorry. I selected DocuSign form groups and then the all TXR docs, and that'll take you to all of the different templates that we have. So once you click on all the different forms that you need, you click add. Now, if you click only selected a couple, but you need to go back and add some, you can always pull in more forms as they're needed. You don't have to pull them all in right now. It's not like a once time and then you're done. 
So once you pull in all the forms that you need, this is where we're actually going to start going in and um, filling everything out and getting it ready to send to your client. So any questions before we go to the next steps? Okay, cool. So watch this I'm thinking. So once you click on the form that you're wanting to start filling out, it'll pull it up in DocuSign eSignature, which makes it editable. And this is where you can start typing in the information. Because I didn't have anything typed into my details page, it didn't pull anything over. But had I had done that, it would have done that for me. Does, does DocuSign have the concept of templates to where all the broker information is already filled out if we set up as templates? You can, if you have them already set up in templates, you can pull those in every time. No, I'm asking, I can zip on to build templates. Right. Yes. Yes. Have that similar yes. Thing. Okay. So when you were saying download all these TXR forms, they're not preloaded in the KW. No. Form. Simply, Alice was just pulling all the forms in that are used on a regular basis in there, so that you guys don't have to go to zip forms and search for them. But the forms that Alice put in there does not currently have the brokerage information already preloaded. They're just blank. But I definitely, you can definitely fill them out, save them as a template to be able to upload it as you need them. Which is a lot of what a lot of agents are doing or a lot of teams are doing. They're just importing those forms that they already have filled out with the brokerage information and sit here. So once you fill out everything that you need, you'll always push save and close. Once it's done, <coughs> thinking. TX not an appropriate abbreviation. I'll just spell it out. <laughs> okay, so let's just say for this example that I have all my forms filled out and I'm ready to get them in to my client to sign. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to click on the envelope tab. Does everybody see that? Right here? It's a little envelope tab. You click on envelopes. Now what an envelope is, is it's basically sending an email through DocuSign Transaction Room, okay? So what we'll do is we'll click on new with this little plus. And now it's gonna say, okay, well, what do you wanna name the envelope? Something that you and your client will know, whether it's the street name or the form or whatever. I'm just gonna say, please review and sign. Then this is where on the add documents to envelope, you're gonna click room docs because we're gonna pull the documents that we have in that room into this envelope, okay? So for this one, I'm just gonna pull in this one and this one just for this example. If you have one, three, five, seven forms, how many forms that you have filled out right now for your client to sign, go ahead and attach them in this. You don't have to send, that way you're not having to send multiples, okay? And it's less heavy for you and your client, okay? So we'll do add selected. You'll come down here to room, add recipient. Now, if you added your person beforehand, you can do the pre tag roles, and you're gonna select whoever that is. Now, keep in mind that when you're called selecting your recipient, if their email address is not next to their name, it's not gonna let you select that person, okay? So that's why it's important to add your person to the people tab so that this will pop up, okay? So, from here, I'm gonna select this. And now if there's more than one signer, you could add however many you want. If you're adding the other agent to receive a copy, you can add them here too. So that way once your clients are done signing it, the other person can get it right away and there's no delay of time, okay? So I'm gonna do add selected. And this is where it's gonna tell them what they need to do. So if you're adding the other agent and they're just receiving a copy, then you would say receive a copy or just needs to review. Um, but in this case, I'm gonna have, I'm actually gonna say need to sign. And if you need to put a subject, a message for them that will actually show up, you can do so. If not, you don't have to, it's completely up to you. So once we've done that, we'll click next. What if they need 
show you in just a second. Okay. Once it's done thinking. Okay. So now this is where it's going to take you to where you can still edit things. So if there's like a box that you need to put them to where they need to type something or check something, you have those different options over here. But do you see where it automatically pre-tagged where I need this initial? So if you add your person to the people tab and they've accepted it, it should automatically pre-tag it for you to do pre-tag rules. <laughs> However, I still recommend going through and looking at the document to make sure that nothing was missed just because you don't want something to be missed and then have to send it back to them for like one signature or one initial because that's really frustrating, right? Now, if there's two people on this drop down right here, do you see where it said, like my name has the yellow next to it? If there was another signer, their color would be blue or green. I can't remember which order it is. So if my husband was signing, then I'd be yellow and his tab would be right next to mine with a different color. So as you're going through the documents, make sure that everything was put there. If you need to switch at page two, you can still toggle between it to make sure that everything's there for signatures, initials, and names. Does that make sense? Okay, so say now that you need them to type in something, you can actually click and drag this text box, and you can either have it, or you can have them fill it in. Does that make sense? So like if they're, if, I don't know what they would need to type in there for you, but if they needed to, they have the option to type it in there for you if they needed to. Yeah, something like that. They can type something that they need to. Yes, ma'am. Just only if it's like a box where they need to type in information for you. Like if they need to type in seller disclosure. Yeah, something on the seller disclosure, and they don't want to print it out, print it out, and fill it out. They could sit there and type it if they really want to, but not contracts necessarily. I'm just trying to give you guys the option of where you guys print. I'm just trying to show you guys the different options that you guys have for these different things in here, okay? What about the lease application? Where they have to fill in 90% of it? Is that all? <clears throat> fill in fillable for them? You can make it fillable. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can make it as a template as fillable and just download that fillable you know, template. You know your business and what forms you use the most, so just have them done and ready. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure you can have a text field that's fillable as a template. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, so if I would have put my address and my phone number and stuff like that on the details page, it would have filled in this information, but because I didn't. Um, it didn't didn't fill in that information for me. I would just check there. Yes. Yeah. If you do it before you bring the documents into the room. Okay. So let's say, yes. I have a uh, so we were able to go through the docket plan, so we are with you guys now. Okay. Um, so when we go docs and phone, they ask us about NRI scheme. I'll worry about I'll help you with that later. That's something I have to help you with real quick after. Okay. So Into here, okay. So let's say that I'm ready to um, send this to my client. You can either review it just so you can kind of see what your client's going to see, or you, you can say you're ready to send. If you're ready to send, you'll click the send button, and it'll tell you your envelope has been sent to your client for signature. Then you'll text, call, email your client, however they're going to respond to you the fastest saying that your client, that you sent them something for signature, and I'm gonna go through and actually do this real quick so we can see. So you see where it says right now it's waiting for others? It means that your client needs to get on their job and do their job. So this will come through. Okay, 
it's not showing. It's just like too sad. Probably can I come to me twice. Okay, I'm gonna wait for this to come through, but until then, I'm gonna keep going and I'll show you guys if it comes through. Um, so you see right now how all these little documents that I pulled in have like this little blue box? Once they're signed, that box will then change from blue to green. And that's how you'll know that those are the ones that you need to import into command. And of course, this isn't coming through. Good job, my wife. There it goes. Just came through. Okay, so let me sign these real quick so I can show you. All I had to do is turn off my Wi-Fi and it came through. So once I, I just finished signing the documents I sent to myself, it's now going to come back to the folder. It takes a second to refresh. want the ones that are specifically signed that's fine you can go over here to the action button and create add folder and to label that whatever it is and then drag and drop those fold those documents into that folder you just created so you see right here where it has the folder I just created and then the room box so if you want all those templates that you don't want to see it because you try to keep it organized more power to you you simply click on here on action. Oh wait, no. Is it? <clears throat> you can click on uh, move, and then you can select on in current room under test, move it. And so now it moves it from the documents to that test folder, and you can actually close this test folder so that way you don't see any of it. Can, but you'll still it still be there. About tests, I mean folders, and your just <laughs> yes. Best so DocuSign Transaction Room is now what, basically think of it as your new loop, okay? Folders within DocuSign Transaction Room is just another way for you to keep organized. So say that you have a listing and you get an offer, but that offer falls through. Well, you could create a folder saying first offer, put all those first offer documents in that folder so that they're out of your sight, right? Collapse that folder, they're out of sight, out of mind, right? Then all the documents that you're going to be working with might be the second offer. The reason why I'm saying this is... <laughs> Because I've actually had an agent that had like three, four offers on one house. And so it happens, right? And so it was just a way for her to keep organized, but only be able to focus on the ones that were in that transaction room docs that she had to focus on. So for those that like to stay organized and don't like extra stuff in their way, this is a really good way to do it within DocuSign Transaction Room. And those are archived as long? Well, no, they're not archived. They're still there. Like, I just collapsed the folder so I don't have to see that document. No, I'm asking, do they expire or anything like that? Mm -mm. No. Nope. They'll stay here. As long as you're around. <laughs> They'll be here. So, does that help with kind of like the organization and kind of understanding how you can kind of keep stuff organized? Because I know, especially as the busy time approaches us, it's going to be chaotic. So, from here, when you go back to command, and I just toggled, I have a DocuSign tab open and I have my command tab open, okay? The other thing I wanted to point out before we go back to command is, you see this little gray circle right here? With this little person? Does everybody see that? This little circle right here? Does everybody see that? So that can actually toggle you back and forth between e-signature and transaction room. So right now we're in transaction room. If you click it and you say switch to e-signature, it'll take you straight to e-signature and so forth. 
So it's a way just to toggle back and forth, click in manage. This will also tell you what's, what's waiting and what you're still completed or expiring to or whatever the case is. So I'm gonna switch back to rooms. back to command okay so now let's say that you're ready to add a file to one of these spots you simply click on add a file click DocuSign and it's gonna say which file which form do you want to bring in now the key thing to remember when you're doing that if you don't have these extra ones in that folder that we created you're gonna want to look for the ones that say signed at the end because that's the one that was just completed by your client and it's ready to be Okay. So always make sure you pick the one that says sign. Yes. Does it only pull up documents that are in that room? Yes. Okay. Yes. It'll only fo focus on documents that are on the, in that room for that person, okay. not all of your documents. Oh. So it organizes it a little bit more for you. So I'm going to click on the one that says sign, and I'm going to click assign, and now it's going to pull that document from DocuSign Transaction Room <clears throat> and click on my command, and it's done. Yes, sir. I saw the a manual button. If we have documents that were signed in like zip forms. You could just download it just manual it. and just pull it in. Alright, and we'll be okay. Yes. Either button. way, it doesn't matter. As long as they get into that spot, it doesn't matter how you get it there. Or, can you go back to the manual button? Huh? Can you go back one screen just so you can see the manual button? Yeah, so and click then. add a file and click manual. So remember when we were saying that you can drive them from your com computer? Like if you haven't saved on your computer. You can just click, they just click and drag that folder and drop it into that box and it'll put it in there too. Another question, if we have documents that are client signed manually, right, we mm -hmm. have signatures. Scan them in. Can still do this. Yeah, scan them in and just drag them in, drop them in that box. All right, thirdly, so I could continue using zip forms if I want to. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, there's a, as long as it's right. an approved form, right. there's no reason why you can't. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So we're just talking about having things signed do you also have to upload those documents to DocuSign? No, just to command. Just to command because okay. the only thing that compliance is going to check and approve is command. Okay. DocuSign is just a way for you to pull in the forms and put them into command without having to go to multiple places. Is there any intelligence on the ad files where if I actually upload the wrong file, it knows it? Well, this is one thing that you can do is you can actually click on these three little buttons and click remove if you upload it into the wrong spot. And then you it'll know if I put the IBS in the general notes. No, but David will know. <laughs> David will know. Yes, ma'am. Is seller's field <clears throat> going to be a mandatory seller's disclosure? No. So there's a spot for it's only the only ones that are required is if you know that they're required. Like if you have to have it for that transaction. So not all of these forms for this listing you have to have if it doesn't pertain to your transaction. Okay, we just have a pending one right now where they are not tech savvy, they don't have access to a computer, and we weren't sure if we had to try to figure out a way to get them to fill out a new seller's disclosure. Do you already have one? Yeah, hands on. Just upload, scan okay. it, upload it, and drop it in there. Okay, well, but it has to all be done separately, even if our, it goes in a cleaner system. Right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Right. No, you're fine with that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Ask, email David and ask David what he wants you to do. David Wheatley. He's still going to be doing compliance. Ask him if he's okay with you doing it that way or if he wants you to separate them out. I don't know what he's going to tell people. And he and I have not been able to have a conversation. We had a conversation briefly, but not as in-depth as I want. So ask David what he wants you to do. Because I don't want to speak for him. He told you to do it separately? Okay. And I can actually show you after class an easy way to split a document to make it a little easier for you. <clears throat> this is just the command. So you're going to do contacts first and then command? I'm sorry? You're going to do contacts first and then command? Well, I put them in as a contact and command, and then I just came, I, I created the opportunity from within my contact, and it took me to this opportunity. Okay. 
But if you need to get just directly to your opportunities, this little one right here with the two hands hold, shaking, that's how you get to all your opportunities that you've created. Okay, so for this, say that, for example, I'm on this listed folder and you see right here it says it's open. If you were ready to submit this to a compliance, you simply click submit to MC. It'll say that it's submitted. Dave will get a notification. He'll go in and review it. It'll then go from open to submitted, and then when it's approved, it'll go to approved. This is the other thing I want to point out to you guys is under the under contract, you guys see right here where it says manual green sheet? We are no longer doing online green sheets, okay? So if you do not have the Excel version of the green sheet, I'll put in an email and you can ask her for it. But it's, we're only doing until the commissions tab on this command is working, <clears throat> we are doing the manual green sheets. Eventually, the commissions tab is going to replace that and it's all going to be in here. We won't have to worry about it. But we're still working on a few little kinks. Um, so this little commissions tab right here that's grayed out, eventually that's where what will place green sheets. Okay? So you'll do the Excel green sheet, save it as a PDF, upload it as a file, boom, you're done. The other thing I wanted to point out to you guys is under this closed, once we have done the DA, this right here is where we'll put the DA for you guys. So we have a spot to put the DA just like we put the DA for you guys for dot loop. This is where the DA will go whenever it's done. Under the close, under the sub, close, this close folder, it'll say closing disbursement or DA. That's where we'll put the DA once it's it's been created for you. <laughs> no, you do not. You have, to, you have to check. We're working on trying to get some other little notifications, but it's a work in progress. So, manual, always upload your meeting green sheet until further notice, and that's where your DA will be uploaded once it's completed. That's that's DocuSign command. Yay. Any questions? <laughs> yes. Just the uh, Yeah, I'll help you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we went into our team account and he uploaded two documents and I went in there as the compliance person and left and wrote a note to him. Mm -hmm. As a sample, hey, you still need to do this. Mm -hmm. and it's not showing up for him. Okay. How would we communicate to each other at a group that you did add a comment? I added a note. He, yeah, when he sat here, I wrote a note into his thing and said, okay, say, done, and... Uh, that would be a frank question. Okay. That's a frank question. You know where they would show up? No, they don't get it. That's a frank question. I just know the DocuSign part and how to get you paid into the command part. Yes, ma'am. Is it pretty easy to make templates, like, pre save ones that will always populate? Yeah. Right away? Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. You can do them either one. Either one. Yeah. And DocuSign. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you have to call. You have to call DocuSign because when we set this up, we gave them all of the agents and all their KW emails and said these are the ones that are associated with our account, not your personal ones or your whatever, what, like your team names. Or we don't. We, we just gave them the KW emails specifically. So you have to call them and say, hey, can you merge this for me? And they have to do it. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, a couple of questions. So once I'm done submitting or uploading all of my documents, I hit that submit to MC button and it goes to compliance. Yes. And compliance uh, responds. Well, they don't necessarily respond. They just send me the DA. I have to keep checking that, right? Yeah, that but thing. you'll also get a notification if they're done. What you submitted was approved or denied. And if it's denied, then it's something that you might need to fix. Second, secondly, I'm noticing some of these documents are listed as required or optional. Yeah. Um, it's only submit the forms that you know that you need for that transaction. Regardless if it says required. Aww. Thank you all for being here and doing this because I know this transition is hard.
and just know, change is hard, and you all. <laughs>